Welcome to the Driving the World podcast series. I'm your host, Cully Holland. Today we have Rick Seimer from Max Solution Machine Automation. We'll be discussing our motor technologies. Hey, Rick, how are you today? Thanks for coming on. Hi, Coley. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm very happy to see you, and uh, we're going to be talking about some of our motor technologies today. And uh, for those of our customers that are not aware, we do have a DRN, a DRL, and then a servo motor line. And we're just going to try and clear up some of the main differences between those motors. So if you want, we can start with the DRN motor, as that's probably our most common. Yeah, Coley, uh, DRN motor, it's our standard base asynchronous motor. So we use it for um, just general application use. Right. So it's just going to be like asynchronous asynchronous or a squirrel cage, which a lot of industries use. And then I know that we definitely lose some customers when we start talking about DRLs because they might be different, wondering what's the difference between a DRN and a DRL. So if if you could, what's the, one of the main differences between those two? Well, interesting enough, the DRL motor is part of the family, the DR series. Right. However, we call it an asynchronous servo motor. Okay. So you get um, a standard construction of an AC motor, and it's by far nowhere near a standard motor, and it has uh, high performance um, characteristics of a servo motor. So what do I really mean? It's a low inertia motor. Okay. So the rotor diameter has actually been reduced and optimized for servo-based or servo-like applications. But where it really shines is it uh, has greater inertia than a standard servo motor, but less inertia than our standard asynchronous motor. Okay. So it sounds like it's kind of a middle ground between a asynchronous and a servo motor. So we've talked about the DR families and then what are our, what are our servo motors? I think we have the CMPs and such. So correct. What makes them stand apart? Well, we have the CMP series, the CM3C, and these are permanent magnet motors. And then unlike the asynchronous motors that we discussed, these have permanent magnet motors and they have really low inertia rotors. Okay. So this gives them some incredible dynamic capability. They really can come up to speed fast. They don't require any kind of charging currents. They're actually just ready to go and just throw the current to them and they perform. And those don't have any slip, correct? So their their rated speed is their actual speed. The rated speed is actual speed. That's correct. And that I think that is one of the main differences between a uh, asynchronous and synchronous is, you know, slip on asynchronous, no slip on servo motors. Um, And a lot of people wonder about our controls Mm -hmm. and encoders. So I know you can have an encoder on all three motors. That's correct. But which of our motors pretty much require an encoder and some higher level controls in, say, 90% of their applications? Well, as you pointed out, you can apply an encoder to the DR series in general. So like DRN, first motor you referenced, It's an option on that motor. Right. On the DRL series, it's a high-performance, like, servo unit. And this is an asynchronous unit that's always sold with an encoder. Okay, so a DRL always needs an encoder. It always comes with an encoder. Okay. Interesting fact is that it won't run on line voltage, a standard line voltage, anywhere across the world. It's uh, only operated on VFD. That is great to know. The DR series is, uh, I mean, the DRN itself can run on VFD or not. You can run it across the line. Okay. And we order it for specific uh, grid voltages. Right. And then, of course, CM motor or, say, a CMP type, CM3C servo motor. These are permanent magnet units. Uh, They have a wide variety of resolvers, encoders, and they always um, are used in high-performance applications with feedback, and we can run them without Okay. Well, that is great to know. And those are definitely some differences our customers would need to know when ordering a motor, whether or not they need a VFD. So real quick, before I let you go, um, what are some applications for these three different motors? And we'll just start with our DRN. Like, Where is it commonly seen out in the the field and industries? Well, you're going to normally find this on open loop applications. Not that they can't be used closed loop, right? but you'll find them on conveyors, anything from roller coasters, Ferris wheels, uh, different types of turntables, um, basic rotary machines that don't require any kind of performance or feedback. Very cool. And so then the DRL, we are saying it's a slight step up, some middle ground. Where would you 
probably find uh, DRL or what's like its best application? DRL really shines in material handling. Okay. This is a motor that has higher inertia than uh, servo motors. Right. And so anytime you need high torque performance, dynamic applications that um, are for bigger machinery, things that have high inertia, right. then the DRL is perfect for that. For example, you might find it often on hoist, uh, travel cars, uh, gantry cranes, wow, okay. uh, a wide variety of even robotic applications. Well, fantastic. Yeah. So with those two, we've covered a lot of the industry. So where would our servo motors fit in? Well, these are the highest performance units that we're offering, and you'll find them on things like packaging machinery, maybe palletizers or carton erectors or uh, horizontal or vertical form fill seal machines, okay. things of that nature. Well, very cool. So it sounds like we can pretty much offer anything our customers need from any level of applications. Is there anything else you want to add on our motors, or have we pretty much talked about it all? No, I think we've uh, pretty much covered all the general aspects of that motor series and our offerings. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on today, Rick. Coley, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you.